am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to over dye some commercial colorways of yarn. Sometimes you might find clearance yarn on a base that you love but the colors aren't quite your thing and you may want to shift it to something that is more your style. Now I have over dyed solid commercial colorways in the past but I have not yet over dyed variegated or speckled commercial colorways and I have two from Knit Picks that we're going to play with today. I happen to really like these two colorways. We have some Knit Picks Stroll which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and Knit Picks Hawthorne which is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid. But I thought that these are good examples for over dyeing. If you're curious about these colorways or the bare form in these bases, um, this is the Yeti Hand Painted uh, and this is Cosmic Speckle. And I'll place affiliate links for the dyed forms if they are still available or similar ones and the bare forms of these two yarn bases down in the video description. I especially really enjoy this speckled colorway and I think that the colors are really, really fun and we consistently have a gray base with some magenta, blue, and black speckles on it. This base actually looks like it could still be as it was dyed because of the way you can see the different colors sort of pooled throughout the skein. Whereas our stroll has definitely, definitely been re-skeined. I'm not sure how long the different color sections are here, but we've got a pastel blue, a tan, a little bit of white or very light gray, and then a deeper, more charcoal gray. Today, I am going to just over dye these with a semi-solid or tonal type approach, but you could over dye these in any kind of way, just like with bare yarn. The one thing I do want to point out though, is that you will not be able to turn a speckled yarn like this or a variegated yarn into a perfect solid yarn. I mean, I suppose you could, but it would require a lot of color correction, hand painting, being very methodical. So there's not a way to take this and turn it into solid. You're not gonna dye enough, even I think with black, to make some of those little differences go away, but you can tone down the variation. So you have something that feels more subtle and tonal if that's what you prefer. But the best candidates for over dyeing would be yarn like this that is medium to paler toned. Uh, if you're starting with something that is extremely saturated already, it'll be hard to cover that color at all. To get started, we need to pre-soak the yarn. And I wanna pre-soak it in just some plain tap water with no acid. Uh, because I'm going to want to add it to the dye bath without acid so we can get slightly more even coverage than otherwise we might get. Now, I have added reusable nylon zip ties onto the yarn to use as a tie. This really helps to keep things from getting tangled. My one regret is that I don't have a second skein in these colorways so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So I'll just have to compare it with pictures of how it looked at the beginning. Now, Stroll and Hawthorne do absorb color similarly, which is why I'm planning on dyeing them in the same dye pot, but this is more of a comparison of each yarn with itself versus the two to one another. So anyway, I'm going to let this pre-soak for at least 30 minutes, and in the meantime, we can start setting up our dye bath. Today, we are going to use some Dharma Forest Green to over dye the yarn. All of the tools and equipment I'm using are dedicated for dyeing yarn and aren't used for the preparation of food. And let's see, I think I want to go somewhere between a one and a half percent or a two percent depth of shade of this green, which will be a bit on the darker side. Yeah, I think we're going to be at a one and a half percent depth of shade and well, let's see how much more dye we have. Okay, we have about another 75 milliliters. I will go ahead and rinse out the bottle, but let's do a quick little bit of math. For some very quick math, 
we added 375 milliliters of a 1% stock solution, which because a 1% stock is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid, that means we have 3.75 grams of dye total that we added to our pot. And since we're gonna be dyeing 200 grams of yarn, this will give us 1.875 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn, or a 1.875% depth of shade. Because the depth of shade is defined as the number of grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. But Rebecca, you might be wondering, there's already color on the yarn. And that is true. The depth of fit shade I'm talking about is not the total depth of shade, the total amount of dye on the yarn, but it is the amount of the depth of shade of this forest green acid dye that we are about to add onto the yarn. And so an accurate comparison of this depth of shade would be from other yarn in the same Knit Picks dyed colorways already versus comparing this yarn to a bare skein of Stroll or Hawthorne to see what that color would look like. Because the gray and blue and pink and other colors in our yarn already will have an influence on the color that our eyes see in the end. But this is a fairly large amount of dye and so should make our final colorway a lot more subtle. Back to the dye bath, I am coming in with the liquid that I have rinsed from our stock solution bottle. Now, I gave a number up to three decimal places. The depth of shade is not that accurate. My measurements are not that accurate uh, because, you know, I was estimating off of a graduated beaker here. But I hope just showing the way that I calculated this out might be helpful to see. Okay, and again, there's no acid in here yet, so that way I can add the yarn in. Um, I think, did I say that there's 16 cups of water in here? Whoa, that's a lot of coverage. It's going to be really, really subtle. That's great, because I, for all, I loved both of these colorways to start with. I wanted to show uh, something that... You know, if you had one that you really didn't like, and what what you could do um, to try to cover it up a bit, but oh, this is going to work fabulously. Now, to our dye pot, I am going to add a quarter cup of white vinegar, which is the equivalent of six tablespoons. So that gives us our one of my favorite ratios of two tablespoons of white vinegar per eight cups of water. And I'm raising and lowering to help stir things up. My work surface is protected so I don't make a mess, but I do want, I'm sort of checking, and I especially want to check around the ties because what I really, really don't want, I don't mind if the coverage isn't perfectly even, but I don't want white patches left if I can help it. And so that's why we are starting cold as we add the yarn and stirring it up a lot. But we will see just how much of the a difference this coverage makes uh, in a little while. But let me zoom you in real quick. It looks like everything is completely covered up. And I do want to point out that we do still see, um, even though not all the colors absorb the speckles, here on our speckled one and then it's a little more apparent but you can see some of the variegated uh, ness from our stroll so that is definitely present still but now let's go heat things up okay we're now on the stove top i have the heat on medium high at least for a bit we are going to heat this for at least 30 minutes or uh, I'll come back if the color all absorbs before that, but it may take a while. We've got a lot of dye in there. And as for stirring, I may or may not come and stir it. Uh, certainly I will let you know next time I check in if it's been stirred or not. But if you want to keep more even coverage, you do want to stir so that way the dye has really good access to all of the yarn. But if you don't mind there being a bit of tonal variation in the coverage, then you can just leave it as is. <laughs> the stirring won't hurt anything. Um, the forest green is very almost teal-like. There is a lot of blue in it. 
Um, but since it's a little bit greener, that's why I went for that versus sort of a more saturated blue because I thought that, um, you know, it would be a bigger risk over that pink. But anyway, I think I might just come every once in a while, stir things up, and we'll come back and check in soon. I did stir the yarn a couple of times while we waited, and the 30 minutes are now up. When I checked, yeah, there's a tiny bit of some yellow left. It was a little bit greenish yellow when I checked maybe 15 minutes ago, but most of the color is in our yarn. So I am going to turn off the heat completely, leave the yarn in here for a bit to maybe absorb some of that last color, and then once it's cooled, a bit more, maybe 30 minutes or so, I'm not sure. Uh, then I will remove it until it has cooled completely so we can wash the yarn. It's been a while. The dye bath is warm, but no longer hot. And I am going to carefully remove our yarn. So here is our variegated one, and you can still see those darkest areas in there. Here is our speckled. And if the yarn feels a little bit tangled when you remove it from a pot, I find it easier to wait until it's dry to try to sort it out than when it is wet. But I definitely still see our speckles in here. Uh, I wonder, so I definitely almost feel a hint of pink in that one right there. I wonder how different the speckles will feel once it is dry, but now I need to let this finish cooling. However, we can certainly say that we have taken two colorways that had lots of different colors in them and made them a lot more subtle with over dyeing. These aren't again completely solid, but the color differences in here are so much less pronounced. So when you go and use them, you'll see less variation and it's gonna feel more like sh some very subtle shifts versus feeling a little bit more wild. And so I would say that if you wanted to do some cables or something, that might stand out a little better now with a less contrasting base. But I mean, we still have to wait for things to dry to see completely. Let's wash this yarn. Some of the keys for toning down a colorway that you want to over dye, whether it's yarn that you dyed yourself or a commercial colorway that you have from somewhere else, uh, the main thing you want to focus on, it helps to have a dark saturated color as the color you're over dyeing with. Uh, for example, like black or navy or a deep red. Uh, if you wanted to over dye with a pastel, you could shift the hues of some of the colors potentially, but you wouldn't necessarily uh, reduce the overall contrast. Like with what we've been able to do today where we really, really don't see a lot of those colors coming through anymore. Now, part of me is sad because the colors that we started with were really, really pretty. And so it's a shame to have covered them up in such a big way. So if you want to cover with a lot of color but not lose as much of the variation, we still have variation here from the original colorways. It's just a lot more subtle and we have no bleeding going on. I would recommend building up your tonal color slowly. So when you have your dye that you want to over dye it with, use just a fraction of it at a time, let it absorb, add more dye to the pot, more, a little bit at a time. So then you don't go too far. But a lot of times there's a case where someone has a skein of yarn and they really don't like it and want to just cover it up and turn it into something new. And this kind of technique is perfect for that. So anyway, I am going to finish rinsing out the soap. Then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. I will admit that I don't think my goal at the beginning was to over dye these to the extent where they feel, uh, where it's really, really hard to tell what was there to begin with. But I'm actually really happy that I did this because I think that this serves as a good demonstration of that if you have a variegated or a speckled colorway and you're just not a fan, 
if you go and get a saturated color, which we could go more saturated. We could go more saturated. But if you go for a saturated color, then um, that really does tone down all the other variation that was in there to begin with. On the Hawthorne, you can still see the speckles. And if I, it the green looks a little bit paler than it really is, but this sort of ups the contrast between these specks. And some do still feel very, very pink and others feel more black maybe. It's extraordinarily subtle and beautiful. As for the stroll, there are these areas that are more pigmented through here. This is a lovely tonal. I think that some of the more subtle shades, the pale blue and tan and more white color that I believe were in the original, uh, those were very were much more overtaken by the green and it's hard to really see a difference between those hues. So this will still have variation, but it's going to feel more tonal and less variegated. I do still have another Hawthorne speckled yarn in my collection from one of those uh, Knit Picks clearance sales, but I feel like it's still probably cheaper to buy the bare Hawthorne, even though this was discounted, but it's easier for me to over dye a speckled colorway that comes from someone else <laughs> than it is to do it to my own. Uh, so I do have this on hand and I think I'd like to over dye it in a more variegated kind of way versus going for a solid. But if you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comment section below. I have had a lot of requests lately for information about over dyeing yarn. And so I really hope that this example was helpful. And next time you are shopping, if you see some yarn in a fiber content on a base that you really like, but you're not a fan of the colorway, then you can consider turning it into something else. But of course, remember, uh, e either of these colorways, if we wanted to create like a very pastel baby pink, if there's a lot of color there already, you're not really going to cover up or uh, you really, <laughs> you're not really going to cover up what was there before. So you really do need something that is on the more pigmented and saturated side if you really want to uh, tone down the variation that was present before. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really, really hope that this video was helpful. If you would like to see more examples of me dyeing yarn, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week. And again, if you want to try over dyeing the same bases I did, I will have affiliate links to Knit Picks in the video description, and I will do my best to link to the exact colorways, which may or may not still be available, but I believe that there should be a, some kind of variegated kind of stroll and some kind of speckled kind of hawthorn, at least when the video is published. If you would like other ways to help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, uh, I do have a Patreon and an Etsy shop where almost all of the yarn I dye in my videos ends up. There's links to everything in the video description. I always have all kinds of handy information down there to make it as easy as possible for you to try these techniques yourself at home. Thank you so much for watching.